Hello everyone, welcome back to part three. Uh, this is going to be some more advanced factoring techniques and specifically we're going to look at factoring fractional exponents. Um, so here's an example of a problem. You might have x to the three-fourths minus x to the one-fourth and you might want to factor this. The idea here is that uh, you know when we are factoring polynomials with with integer exponents you're usually trying to like find the zeros or, or make it nice in some way. Um, if you are in a situation where you've got some, got an ex expression like this, you're probably just stuck with it and you're trying to factor it so you can figure out what to do with it. It's kind of that idea in math that sometimes you just need to take something and change its form so that you can better understand it. And that to me is the main purpose of this. Um, I'm going to do an example and then I'll, I'll talk about the theory of why we do what we do when we factor this out. But uh, here's the example. So I have an x to the 3 fourth minus an x to the 1 fourth. I'm going to say treat this as if it's kind of in a bracket and I'm going to find something that I can pull out of both terms out to the other side of this bracket. So the thing that I'm going to pull out is x to the 1 fourth. Okay uh, now maybe here's what I want you to imagine. Imagine that I had over here an x cubed minus x. And that was in a bracket, I would say, okay, what's the greatest common factor? And I would say the greatest common factor is x. So let me pull that x out, and write it on the outside. And then I would have to figure out what goes on the inside. And well, I would say, okay, with this easier problem, the negative sign stays. Um, here, x divided by x, right? When you pull something out, it's kind of like dividing it. x divided by x will just be 1. And here, you're pulling that x out, so you're kind of like dividing it out. Uh, you would get x uh, cubed over x, which is x squared. So you'd get x squared minus 1 times x. Um, that probably took longer than you would do normally. But we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm taking out an x to the 1 fourth. The negative sign stays. x to the 1 fourth taken out of itself leaves you with a 1. And here's where things get a little weird. x to the 3 fourths you take out an x to the 1 fourth, that's like dividing it. So I'm doing x to the 3 fourths divided by x to the 1 fourth. What do you do when you're uh, dividing things with exponents in the same base? You subtract the exponents. So 3 fourths minus 1 fourth is 1 half. And this would actually factor into x to the 1 half minus 1 times the quantity x to the 1 fourth. So it's a little weird. You have to be comfortable with fractional exponents but it's really just factoring like we've been doing for years and years. Just like factoring that you've been doing, you can check your work by multiplying everything back in. So if you multiply x to the 1 half times x to the 1 fourth, you would indeed add the exponents, right? We subtracted them earlier. We're going to add them if we're checking our work. And we get x to the 3 fourths minus 1 times x to the 1 fourth is x to the 1 fourth. So we got back the original, and that's how you know, again, that a factoring procedure has worked. Okay, so that was the example. Now we're going to go into the theory, and I'll give you some advice, and then we'll just do a bunch of examples. First hint, remember your exponent rules. You're multiplying things of the same base, you add the exponents, and if you're dividing things of the same base, you subtract the exponents. Second, this important thing, we just talked about it, factoring is really reverse multiplying. So when you're factoring things out, you're kind of dividing the inside, um, which is important because we have a rule for exponent division. So we're going to end up when we're factoring things out, we're going to usually subtract those exponents. And finally, here's the key trick. You want to factor out the term with the smaller exponent. Why would you do that? Well, uh, let me do a, a normal example that makes sense. Let's say I had x cubed minus x squared, and I said factor that. You have two terms there. Usually you would probably say, Mr. Eck, obviously you should factor out the x squared and get x, uh, then is x, what do you get? Minus 1. Yeah, and that works. Why did that work? Well, it worked because 2 was the smaller exponent. Could you, if you wanted to, factor out an x cubed? Yeah, you absolutely could, and you would get x cubed times 1 minus x to the minus 1. Because if you're factoring out that x cubed, you would be like taking away 3x's. Well, you only had 2x's, you took away 3, so you should have minus 1x left. 
that actually, like, we would never do that. That's awkward. But it's legal. Um, so here is the same idea, except it's just not as obvious which thing to factor. So if you remember, I always want to factor out the terms that are the smaller exponent. That's going to leave you with the most stuff, I guess, inside and the most nice uh, result. Okay. Now I really just want to do examples with you. So here I'm looking at again at a, a term. Um, I have an x squared plus 4 in parentheses, but what I notice right away is even though it looks more complicated, this term in parentheses is the same across both. So this is basically the same as just, you know, x to the 3 halves plus x to the 7 halves, and we're trying to factor it. So the fact that it's an x squared plus 4 isn't going to change how this operates. Um, so I'm going to look for the term with a smaller exponent, 3 halves and 7 halves. 3 halves is the smaller of the exponents, so I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to factor out. I'm going to put a big bracket around here, say, okay, this is the term that I'm attempting to factor. Now I'm going to factor out x squared plus 4 to the 3 halves. That's what's coming out. Let me try to line this up a little better. It really helps to be on like line paper or graph paper. And then I'm going to copy those brackets down. Let's figure out what goes in the brackets. The plus sign should copy straight down. That's not, that's always the same, no matter what kind of things you're factoring. Well, you had x squared plus 4 to the 3 halves, and you factored that out, so you should be left with 1. That seems easy. I, I find sometimes people just forget that 1. They get so, like, into factoring the other part that, that's kind of tricky that they uh, forget to put the 1 in there, but it is important. Um, now here, I'm factoring that term out, right? That came out of the expression... To figure out what remains, I'm going to pretend I'm like dividing by that term, right? I'm not actually dividing. I'm kind of like pretending I'm dividing because I'm trying to work out the reverse multiplication. Okay, so if I was doing, you know, y to the 7 halves over y to the 3 halves, I know by the exponent rules that that would be y to the 7 halves minus 3 halves. And it's going to be the same thing here doesn't matter that's an x squared plus 4. So 7 halves minus 3 halves would be uh, 4 halves, or 2. And that's going to be true here. This is going to be the same as x squared plus 4 to the second power. I had 7 halves powers. I took out 3 halves powers. So I was left with 4 halves powers that reduced to 2. This is now factored. It's not really simplified, so let's take a second and simplify it. Uh, what I would do is, is actually square this out. So again, I still have this. I still have a 1, and then this just needs to factor out. So that'll be x to the 4th plus 8x squared plus 16. It's a perfect square pattern. And then the final result will be something like x squared plus 4 to the 3 halves times x to the 4th plus 8x squared plus 17. So the reason that I bothered to multiply this term out was that I knew I could get a 16 to combine with the 1 to give me 17. And this here is a final answer. Now, is it lovely? Is it beautiful? No, not particularly, but you now have a polynomial and you have a term with an exponent. So you've sort of taken something that was completely gross and completely messy and broken it into, oh, what's going on here? A messy part and a polynomial part. And polynomials, like we talked about before, are super nice. So anytime you can take uh, two messy things and make one messy thing and one polynomial, that's progress, even if it doesn't really look like it. Okay, let's keep going. This is the same problem from before, what we did at the start of the video, but I'm going to put a negative on that one-fourth. Uh, and we'll see what happens here. So, when you have a negative in the fractional exponent, everything actually works the same way. So some folks get like scared of the negatives. They, they uh, don't like it. Works the same way. You're going to factor out the smallest. In this case, the smallest 
is negative one-fourth. One-fourth is already smaller than three-fourths, so negative one-fourth is much smaller than three-fourths. So let's look at what we get. So I'm going to kind of say, hey, all right, put that in brackets, make some new brackets here. I'm going to pull this out. You can factor out to the left or the right. I'm going to factor out to the right today just because I want to. Uh, so this is going to be x to the negative one-fourth on the outside. Minus copies down. This thing divided out with itself, so that's just a 1. That's the same as before. But look at this guy. Here I'm factoring out an x to the minus 1 fourth. So that's like dividing by x to the minus 1 fourth. But when I have x to the 3 fourths divided by minus 1 fourth, that gives you x to the 3 fourths minus minus 1 fourth. Right? The division is a negative, but you're dividing out something that's already negative. That's going to be x to the 1, or just x. So it turns out that this factors into x minus 1 and x to the negative 1 fourth. Uh, in this case, you can do one more thing, which is negative 1 fourth means put it on the bottom. So you could have an x minus 1. doesn't really need those brackets anymore, but I'm going to keep them. Over x to the 1 fourth. And that's probably the final form that I would leave it in, um, just to avoid having any negative exponents in the final expression. So whenever you have a negative exponent, you can pull it out, and then you can use it to uh, use the negative to put it on the bottom of a fraction. And again, what have we done here? Well, we had something that had two gross pieces, and then we have one simple piece and one gross piece, but the gross piece is, you know, just as gross as it was before. Uh, so I think we've, sim we've simplified this. Here's another one. I tell you what, why don't you pause the video and try to work this out yourself and then you can check your answer. Okay, uh, let's work it out together. So here uh, there's one little change which I do have some numbers and we are gonna factor those out too. Uh, so I am gonna have to deal with that. But first let's identify what thing we were, we're trying to take out. So I have uh, negative 3 fourths and positive 1 fourth Negative 3 fourths is actually the smaller exponent, even though 3 fourths is larger than 1 fourth. So I'm going to put a bracket around here, pretend that's bracketed. Um, make some space for myself. Uh, and then what I'm going to pull out is the greatest common factor of both terms. So I'm going to pull out an x to the negative 3 fourths. That's the smallest x exponent. I'm also going to pull out a 6 because that's the greatest common factor of 6 and 12. Okay, let's figure out what goes inside here. Uh, so the plus copies down. Here I'm pulling out 6x to the minus 3 fourths out of 12x to the minus 3 fourths. What I'm left with is just a 2. Let me make some more space there, 2. Uh, now here I'm going to, I'm kind of, I'm imagining, I'm not actually dividing, I'm imagining I'm dividing by 6x to the negative 3 fourths though. So the sixes would, would divide out, and then the x's I would do one fourth minus negative three fourths. So that would be the same as one fourth plus three fourths, or one. So that's actually just going to be x to the one again, really like one x to the one. And I'm kind of done, so that wasn't so bad at all. It actually is nicer when you pull out a negative. It, it, it seems like it lands, uh, ends up nicer. Let me switch this around a little bit to make a final answer. I would write the top as x plus 2, now that I've, I've got the x alone, over 6x uh, to the, oh wait, hmm. the x to the negative 3 fourths, to the 3 fourths would go on the bottom and become positive. But the 6 is, is not have that negative exponent, that's just 6 to the 1. So I would probably write the 6 still on top. Um, something to be careful of when you make your fractions. Obviously that's a little bit tricky. I almost screwed it up here. Um, but that's how I'd probably write my final answer. Again, is it nicer? Eh, who knows? Uh, but what I could tell from this right away, for example, is that if x equals negative 2, uh, y would equal 0, right? That's something I could tell right away, which could I tell that from the original? Heck no, there'd be no way I would know that. Uh, so a little bit of factoring can reveal some interesting things about the expressions. One more. Again, uh, why don't you try it out if you want. Pause the video right now. 
Remember that you're looking for the exponent that's the most negative to factor out. So here I'm looking, I see uh, some identical terms, that's good. And I notice that negative 5 thirds is actually the smaller of the exponents. So I'm going to factor out that term, which is x squared plus 3 to the negative 5 over 3. That's the term I'm factoring out. I'm taking that, pulling it out of the expression. When you pull that out of itself, you just get 1. Now here, I'm kind of dividing by this same thing to the negative 5 thirds. So let's see what goes on with the exponents then. Uh, well, so I'm going to need to do negative 2 thirds minus minus 5 thirds. So that ends up being, oh, 3 thirds. So this is x squared plus 3 to the first plus 1 in brackets, times this other messy thing. Uh, now let's do that last step, write it as a beautiful final answer. So I'm going to combine the terms, the 3 and the 1, and make it x squared plus 4. That's from the 3 and the 1. Then I'm going to take the entire thing with the negative exponent and write it on the bottom with a positive exponent. And there you go. Again, now we're done. And have you made it nicer? Yeah, maybe, kind of. But there's now no negative exponents. Uh, there's a single term on top and a single term on the bottom. I think that's pretty nice. Uh, so that's factoring fractional exponents. Uh, I know this can be a little bit tricky. It's not super important, uh, at least for Math 4. This might be the only section it really shows up in. But it's the kind of thing that you might just want to have in your back pocket if you're trying to be able to solve all kinds of problems. Uh, because it can, like many things, show up in surprising places, and sometimes you just want every tool available in your toolkit. Uh, well, thank you all for watching. I know it's been a long uh, section on factoring. Um, you know, Take your time, do your problems, be thorough, check your answers. Let me know what questions you have, uh, and I'll see you guys next time.